by enabling students to only be test takers don't you think the school system demoralize their creativity their imagination and their skills does the education system meet the goals of a true education what purpose it must serve well let's comprehend the real meaning of education with the reference to the story titled Albert Einstein at School written by a truly gifted writer Patrick Pringle Hello dear students this is Sushma Singh and you are watching Booster Classes consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and get benefited Before moving on to the comprehensive study of this inspiring biographical account, first and foremost, let me give you its overview. Now, this extract from Albert Einstein's biography, named "The Young Einstein" by Patrick Pringle, records the unhappy period of his schooling in Munich and how the school diploma felt like a far-fetched dream for Albert Einstein. Eventually Einstein who was expelled from his school later proved to be a great scientist so the story is all about this The story begins with young Einstein's encounter with his history teacher in school in Munich where he was studying for his diploma Albert actually got into an argument with his history teacher Mr Brown who asked Einstein to name the year when the Persians defeated the French Waterloo Albert was unable to answer it Albert was extremely honest and blunt in expressing his dislike for learning facts he had an analytical and rational mind he hated rote learning and found no point in memorizing facts according to Einstein ideas are better than mere dry facts because facts could be seen in books any moment any time he didn't think that acquisition of facts was real education now this made mr brown his teacher speechless for a moment on the whole albert hated his school here his honesty was mistaken for rudeness and stubbornness he was just straight forward because he was unable to cope up with the conventional system of education but his opinions were very strong and a firm conviction that not be termed as impolite or rudeness now let's see how his teacher reacted his teacher his teacher was speechless for a moment in the beginning he even boiled with anger at albert's stubbornness and straightforwardness and with a great satire the teacher asked albert to explain his theory of education to the whole class he even punished him by making him stay in for an hour for an extra period that day he called albert a disgrace to school and an ungrateful boy who ought to be ashamed of himself now this episode with his history teacher affected einstein deeply he was miserable both in school as well as at his lodging albert was not at all happy attending school at munich because most of the days were filled with unpleasant uh, experiences he felt miserable not because the day was bad his unhappiness was due to the fact that the very next day he would have to go to that hateful place where he was expected just to learn things by heart the teachers were unsympathetic and sarcastic they there was hardly any study of science at school most of the time he was punished and was considered a disgrace to the school albert desperately longed to escape from the torture of school albert was equally unhappy at his lodging 
Being poor, Albert lived in a rented room in one of the poorest localities of Munich. However, it was not the shabbiness or the bad food or lack of comfort which troubled him. The most unbearable element in his place was the atmosphere of slum boyness. Because most of the time, Albert found the slum children were bitten by their parents and the mothers were bitten by drunken husbands. There was literally no peace of mind, both at school and his lodging place. Then the only solace to him, the comfort to him, was to play his violin. When Albert expressed his concern to his cousin Elsa regarding getting through examination, she tried to convince Albert, telling that getting through the examination is not at all a big deal. She was of the opinion that any student can do that. Elsa expressed confidence that Albert could pass the exam. She told him that even stupid boys had passed examination by just learning like a parrot. According to her, no understanding is essential to pass the examination. Just root learning will fulfill the purpose. So she advised Albert to do the same in order to clear his diploma. Einstein expressed his helplessness by saying that he was not at all good at memorizing things by heart. Well, proceeding further, here we will come to know about Yuri. Yuri was a good and very close friend of Einstein. Albert shared his unhappiness and pain with Yuri. During that traumatic period in the school in Munich, Einstein's only savior was his friend Yuri. Yuri was indeed Albert's friend, philosopher and guide. Whenever Albert was upset, Yuri tried to comfort him and kept his spirit up by telling him that he was fortunate to have an accommodation to himself. The people around him were definitely poor but not uncivilized like the ones with whom he shared his room. He also told him about the fight between the students in which one of them was killed. The only regret the boy had that he did not have any mark on his face during that fight. Hence, he would not be able to boast of the scar as a symbol of bravery. Albert was literally and totally surprised and equally disgusted at the thought of such formalized violence. Finally, Albert decides to leave school for good. So let's find out what Albert planned to get away from school. After spending six months in Munich, Albert thought it was meaningless for him to stay on in Munich. It was no use wasting his father's money and everyone's time and efforts. He knew that if he ran away from school, he would be sent back to school by his father. Therefore, he had to leave school with a valid and genuine reason. So, to escape the torture at school, he made a very uh, elaborate plan. He wanted to get a doctor's certificate that declared he had a nervous breakdown and was unfit to go to school. He revealed his intention, this intention to his best friend Yuri and even wanted his help. Yuri also understood Albert's helplessness and being a sincere and true friend, he arranged a meeting with his friend doctor, Dr. Ernst Well, to provide Albert with a false certificate of nervous breakdown. Thus, Yuri was extremely helpful to Albert Einstein. Yuri, but Yuri warned Albert against trying to deceive the doctor. He told Albert to be honest and frank about his intention in front of doctor and he should not even try any deception on meeting the doctor because Albert was the world's worst liar according to uh, Yuri. Yuri actually here uh, he is admiring his honesty calling him by calling him world's worst liar. 
Albert was so honest and straightforward that he could not tell lies successfully. And this Yuri knew very well. Albert's nervousness indicated about his inability to lie. Now, at doctor's office, Albert had no idea what to tell. Albert was indeed nervous. He was indeed worried about making up a story. However, doctor received Albert cordially and put him at ease. He listened to Albert's problem in a very friendly manner and understood his situation well as he had just stopped being a student and he was convinced about the fact that Albert's going to school was not doing Albert's going to school was not doing anyone much good. So he was uh, ready to furnish Albert uh, with the false certificate. Even Albert was happy to achieve what he wanted, though in a very slightly, uh, slightly different manner. But his purpose uh, will be uh, fulfilled because of this fake certificate which he will be getting from the doctor. When doctor wanted to know what Albert would do next, Albert said that he had planned to continue his higher education in Milan in an Italian college. And to secure admission there, he would get a reference certificate from his maths teacher, Mr. Koch. Mr. Koch, his mathematics teacher, was very encouraging. He knew that Albert was brilliant and he appreciated Einstein's genius. Being highly impressed by Albert's mathematical abilities, Mr. Koch gladly and willingly provided him a glowing reference letter so that he could pursue his higher studies in mathematics. He made it clear that Albert was ready to enter a college. Finally, here we will come to know why Albert was expelled from school and what was Albert's mood while leaving his school. To his utter surprise, the headmaster himself sent for Albert. Albert thought that he would be punished for laziness and bad work as usual, but the head teacher informed him that the school management had decided to expel him for his hostile presence in the school. He accused Albert of hindering serious work because Albert refused to learn and was in constant rebellion. So the headmaster asked him it would be better if Albert himself leave the school. That very moment Albert found that medical certificate a complete waste because he had really worked so hard to get that false certificate of nervous breakdown just in order to leave the school on his own terms and conditions. He was also eager to show the medical certificate to the, his uh, head teacher and wanted to know, uh, notice his reaction. However, the certificate had become unnecessary because he did not even get the chance to furnish the certificate. All his efforts seemed worthless and Albert felt the certificate burning a hole in his pocket. Now, this expulsion uh, from his school was a welcome relief to him. Albert left his school without any regret. He indeed was not ashamed of being expelled and walked straight out of the school with his head high. Neither did he stop to bid farewell to anyone nor look back at the school. The school had been a prison for him for the last five years because of the bad treatment meted out to him by his history teacher as well as the head teacher. There is a clear takeaway for everyone from this chapter because the major theme of the story is that rote learning is not a true education. But a true education is more than bookish knowledge. That is, real education is an inside formation. Unproductive and regimental school system often curbs individual talents. School system should promote innovative thinking. Now this lesson also brings out the value of individuality. 
an essential quality that imparts uniqueness, originality, and self-confidence. One of the underlying themes of this chapter is that interest and will to work alone play a vital role in achieving goals in our lives. Well, considering the aptness of the title, we can definitely say the title is a befitting one because the story revolves around Einstein's struggles at his school in Munich and about his clash with his teachers and students. The school had been a prison for him for the last five years because of the bad treatment meted out to him by his history teacher as well as the head teacher. Albert found himself miserable both in German school and his quarters at Munich. Now this lesson also throws light upon how Albert plans uh, to escape the torture of his school and how Albert Einstein, who was expelled from his school, later proved to be a great scientist. So certainly the title is a befitting one. Hope you all understood this chapter. So here are a few important questions for comprehension check. So solve them and deepen your understanding. Keep watching to keep learning. Thank you.